First one is the Jensen Shannon distance. Um, and let's cover the basics. So again, it uh, covers both the continuous and the categorical features. When it comes to the quick intuition, it is based on KL divergence, which is probably one of the best known ways to uh, kind of compute uh, the divergence, the difference between two features. I'm trying to not use the word distance because KL divergence is actually not a distance measure. Um, but jensen shannon distance, which is based on KL divergence, is a distance measure. Uh, if you're familiar with KL divergence, you can already uh, potentially start building intuition how jensen shannon looks like. And it's based in the range 0 to 1, where 0 means that there is no drift whatsoever, and 1 means that um, the uh, distributions are completely different. So the reference distribution that we will try to compare our new distributions to is completely different. Uh, than the uh, new distribution. Now the intuition. So what we're going to look at here is that there's going to be a reference uh, distribution for which we know everything is fine. And then we're going to look at the analysis distribution, uh, which is the distribution question for which let's say the performance has dropped. And we're going to, uh, we're going to try to see uh, how these distributions are different and how they actually look like. Uh, so here um, you have examples of basically how it can look for both continuous and categorical data. Starting with the continuous data, continuous features, uh, what it does, it captures the amount of overlap or the amount of lack of overlap to be a bit more precise here uh, between two uh, distributions. Uh, and it works uh, kind of by the, as a bidirectional KA divergence. So as you potentially know, KAL divergence is um, asymmetric. So if you compare distribution A to distribution B, and then you compare distribution B to distribution A, you might get a different number. Uh, Jensen's shallow distance is uh, symmetrical. And basically what you see here is in red, as you will always see in red, is a kind of physical or graphical representation of um, the divergence or the distance measure that we're looking at. Uh, so here you see basically if uh, these methods, uh, sorry, if the distributions are not the same, it's gonna go higher. And it is kind of the average of comparing A to B and B to A. Uh, so you see here, they are exactly the same. It goes to zero. Here they are vastly different from each other because uh, the analysis uh, distribution almost doesn't exist and the reference distribution is quite dense. So it's gonna be, the, the divergence measure is gonna be quite high. Um, and the same here, uh, except in categorical features, we have even nicer and more direct way of uh, quantifying what it actually is. And it is the average of all changes in the relative frequencies of categories. So what we're looking here are the relative frequencies of categories. And we are looking at the average of all changes between A and B, B and C, et cetera. And what we see is basically we take the average of that uh, and that is our divergence uh, divergence measure, which then, if I remember correctly, we take the square root of to get the distance. And now results. Results will always be quite similar. So let me just walk you through uh, how to read the graph once, and then we're going to read it the same way for every other method. So what we see on the left is our reference period for which we would not expect any strong drifts. And if we actually observe some kind of drifts here, then we should be a bit worried if we see the same kind of drift magnitude in our um, analysis period, because it might be a false positive. Uh, so what you see here is basically on the x-axis is the time progression. Let's say that we trained our model in, on data from up to uh, November. Then we deployed our, sorry, we tested our model uh, in the half, uh, on the data from the first half of December. And then we deployed our model afterwards. Um, and then you see that for reference data, I'm thinking roughly fine. There was a bit of drift in the middle. And then you see the results per chunk, so per group of observations that compare the entire reference data set at once to the value of the chunk. Um, and that's why you can see that even in reference, these distance can go slightly higher. And if it goes above the threshold, and in that case, the default threshold is just 0 0.1, it's something that we empirically determined to be um, quite a robust threshold. And if things go above that, 
then you should at least take a look at them. Um, you can, of course, change this threshold to anything you want, and you can base this threshold on two things. You can either uh, set a constant threshold, um, such as 0 0.1, or you can base it on the standard deviation or variance of the measure in the reference data. Uh, and in that way, uh, you can basically make kind of a dynamic threshold that's going to change based on your reference data. And here we see that the um, metric increases at some point. Uh, we have then alerts, which tell us something's off. It's a separate column in your results uh, that you can then later use to potentially do some kind of automated retraining, automated checks uh, based on whether you have alerts on your um, univariate detection measure. 